Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. This tutorial covers writing test cases in My Test Case Manager. First up, the test case tab or tabs. Depending on the template you're using, there'll be either one tab named test cases. So here's the default template and one tab named test cases. Click on it. Or if you're using the larger template, large template up here in the title, then there's lots of different test case tabs. TC1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Next up, creating section headers for navigation and clarity. It's generally a good idea to organize your test cases under sections. That'll give you a navigational aid as you're scrolling through the test cases. Notice as we scroll through the orange section headers, and you can do whatever color you want, but there's the properties tab right here and the test cases for it. And then there's the test cases tab, this one, and all the test cases for it. Keep scrolling down, oh, and our eye catches the next section header, the test run log tab. Well, there should probably be a report section header, and there is, and an about section header, and there is. And so section headers are a nice way to organize your test cases. So here is how you enter a section header. I just went midway down the page. I'm going to start off in the execution time column and just put in zero for zero minutes. And for the section status, I'm going to do I for informational so it doesn't count towards any of our test cases. And then I'll put in whatever my section header is. Section header, blah, blah. So, so far, so good. Notice that the uh, test case number automatically comes up. It's gray. Never change the gray cells, only change the yellow cells. That's a general rule throughout the entire template. So anyway, we have our section header started up. And what I like to do is highlight all of the three columns there. And control one key to bring up the formatting and go to the fill and do whatever color you want. Typically you're gonna want something lighter. I mean, you could go dark and then you could take the font color and make the color white. You could do something like that. That really makes it stand out. Control Z to undo, Control one, pop up the help. Maybe instead I'll just do a light blue. There we go, and leave it black. So it's up to you what you wanna do for a section color. Do note, however, that in the dropdown, we're gonna learn about that a little bit later. I, informational, has no formatting. So whatever you put overrides. But as soon as I do a T or an F, there's conditional formatting that's gonna override it. But this is a section header, that's why it's I. And then it won't count towards anything, test cases or numbers or anything like that. So that's how you do a section header. Next up, writing your first test case. So there's only three columns, well, four if you include the test case number, three columns of data that you're gonna enter for the test case. I don't want to get into all the details, but I've been building test case management systems, applications, spreadsheets, et cetera, since 1999. And when you have many columns, it just gets in the way. It makes things too complex. And it, it, anyway, I don't want to get into that. If you want to see the decision behind that, go look at the GitHub article down towards the bottom in the readme file, and it'll go through all the iterations since 99 and how I leaned out the entry, the tech, the data fields for the test cases and why. So let's get started. So the test case, the test steps section where you're putting in your descriptions and repro steps and all that good stuff. The first thing I like to do is click into it, double click, hold down the alt key and hit enter a bunch of times. Watch what happens. Because this is one cell, E20, I can expand it, double click, the auto height's gonna work and it's gonna nicely resize. I don't have any merging going on. If I merge cells, that wouldn't work properly. So there we go. We have set up, got started with our test steps and I'm gonna, you can do whatever you want. If I'm doing exploratory testing, I will just blast out a quick little description. I won't do a lot of details. But, and if I'm writing SQL, I'll write out and paste in the SQL statement. And if I'm testing a UI, I'll paste an image right in here and have little call out buttons on it and discuss those. And I'll show examples of that later in different videos. But for the purposes here, we're just gonna do a generic uh, uh, test case. And I'm gonna pause the video and just fill it all out. Okay, so I've entered all of the text and it looks okay, but maybe I want to click on here and control B to make it bold. And maybe I want to make this bold and maybe I want to make the repro steps and underlined, and maybe I want, eh, 
probably want it bold as well. And maybe I want the expected to be bold and the actual notes bold and underlined because maybe I'm going to you know, have some dashes in case something comes up. Then you can hit Alt Enter and, oops, and keep going. Uh, you can go all the way out to 29 rows before Excel is going to stop expanding. And after 29 rows, you can keep entering more data up to a certain size. It just won't display. Uh, but I, it gets icky if you expand beyond one screen. So I wouldn't suggest doing 29 rows, but sometimes you'll want to do a lot. Anyway, so I can move off and there we go. There is our test case set up with a bit of formatting. Uh, and maybe, maybe I don't like dashes. Maybe I want to make it look even better. So maybe I go to the insert symbols symbol and it's it's the Calibri font I happen to know that and if I scroll all the way down the bottom a lot of characters there page up page up just slowly paging up ah, I know that one's too big this one looks good though so I'll select that one insert close and there we go right up at the top it inserted the bullet so I'll take off Oop. Right, it's just one character. Okay, Control C to copy it. Control V, Control V, Control U. I don't want it to be underlined. Control V, Control V to paste it. Control U to underline it. Maybe add a couple of spaces. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Anyway, eh, you can do whatever you want if you want to spend the time to format it. Or, oh, look at that. I have to add a space. So that's the downside to formatting it is you're going to spend a little bit of time monkeying around. But once you get the template done, you can copy and paste it, copy and paste it, and so on, and then just take and change what you need to change. But I don't know. That's that's a little bit tedious. If you really want to do it on some test cases, go for it. If you don't, undo, 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 undo. We could just leave it simple like that. Or frequently, I will just verify blah 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 and in the description is enough for me to test from and verify blah 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 and maybe I need two alt enters and I have two things that I'm doing so you can do that as well and in subsequent videos I'll do little short examples with embedding a screenshot or embedding SQL statements and some best practices around that but that is how you set up the test steps Next, we're going to want to set up the status. So if I click on the cell, there's a little pop-up that tells me all of the values, what they mean. If I click the drop-down, I get the values. Uh, let's just read these, though. So pass, fail, qualified pass, those are all execution-related. Block, all execution-related. We'll talk about those later. Information we talked about up here for headers, or there's other reasons you'd use information if you're writing a SQL statement and it's part of a test step above and you don't want to double count it, well, then you just make one of those two steps an informational and the other one would be your pass fail, whatever. But for our purposes, we're going to use to do. So we're writing our test case for the first time. We haven't executed it. So we're just going to default it to T for to do, ready to go. And our third column here is execution time. Now, granted, that's usually about executing test cases and how long it took you to run through the steps. But this is the first time we're writing it. And for me, typically I'll write and execute them at the same time if I'm trying to collapse and, and push the testing towards the left. So if I knew this took me two minutes to write it, great, put in two minutes. But if I also know it's going to take me another two minutes to test it the first time, I'll put in four minutes. And so when all of these results are tallied in reports that we'll look at later or up here in the status, you get a good idea of how long this set of test cases is going to take to build and execute. On your next subsequent test cycle, it's not going to be four minutes. I get to take two minutes off because half the time was writing the case. Fine. The next time it's going to be two minutes. And every other time I rerun this test case, it'll hover around two minutes. Or actually what you'll find is you'll get faster and faster as time goes on. So it might be two minutes a couple times and then eventually it drops down to one minute. Just keep altering this test case. Later we'll talk about executing test cases. But anyway, that's the purpose of the execution time field is to roll up into various reports and show you how long it took you to both write and execute the test case. And it's not worth the complexity of splitting this out into two columns, one for how long it took to write and one for how long it took to execute. Just like it's not worth the complexity of 
splitting out repro steps in a column and splitting out expected value and actual value uh, and splitting out comments and no, it's too much. It's better to keep it really simple, focus on the three columns, use this one flexibly for what you need it to be, and then use these other two for tracking status and time. And it works out real nice when you keep focused like that. Now that you know how to write one test case, you can write many. Next up, Excel formatting. Well, I prematurely covered formatting in the prior step, but I'm not going to go back and reshoot it. I'm just going to cover the gaps. We talked about formatting and all the standard formatting works. Bold, I could make things italic. I could double click and home and pin it and change my font to red, double click, whatever. Uh, I, I believe, yeah, the alignment's not going to work. The paragraph's not going to work. But these formatting for font work and all of this stuff I could strike through, etc. So all of these are going to work. And I'm not going to deal with the cell formatting. It's what's handy is the font related stuff that's inside. I wonder, right click. Nope, I don't get a highlight either. So the highlight's not going to work. You can't do a partial highlight, but you can use fonts and you can change font size. So if I want something to be really big, that's fine. That's another thing that you can do to make uh, areas of your test case stand out. Um, undo, undo, undo. Just undo a whole bunch. No, look at that. Let me just click off of it and then undo. Okay, so if I want to do an image, let's say I'm going to print screen here with my tool and I'm going to print screen this block and let's say I'm testing that for some reason and I'll copy this clipboard and I will control V. I can just drag it and drop it. And there you go. Now it's part of your test case. Now, let me see. Let me, I'm going to do an experiment here on the fly off script. Alt enter a couple times and I'll put expected, spelled it wrong, expected result because maybe I want it to uh, stand out on its own here. Control and then alt enter a couple more times. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I'm going to drag it down here. And what I want to see what happens is what if I'm up here and I'm going to tie these two together. And so let's say uh, title, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to hit Alt Enter a couple times. There we go. What I wanted to see is I wanted to see this image stay within this row and this cell and move down. And that's what happened. That's what it did. So if you embed or paste your object inside, it'll, it'll move with the cell. You have all that positioning of the graphic set up so that it moves with it. So that's nice. Uh, in this case, I might do an informational and set it to always be zero minutes because up here is my T to do and maybe it's a five minute test case and maybe it has a bunch of other steps that I'm not going to type out. But then these two are tied together and I just didn't want to have one giant test case and paste it in. I want to have my expected results separate. That's an option. You can do that. That's how you would set it up. Uh, talk about row height limits, code snippets. Another trick I like to do is, well, let's see, undo, uh, validate SQL, blah, 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 blah. And there's a bunch of steps to it. But down here, <clears throat> F2 to enter the cell, Alt enter a couple of times. Maybe I have my select star from some table, some schema, where, and maybe I have a bunch of joins, whatever. But I like to do that and come up and, I don't know what a good color is. Green, is green a good color? Probably want it darker. Purple, whatever. So I might tie these two together and have this be a zero minute, have this be informational, have this be my to-do, and have this be my seven or eight minutes and I'd have preconditions about setting up the SQL ID and blah, 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 blah. But the point is I can come out, copy that. So I popped up Notepad after copying it. And if I paste it, I get all of this. Excel wrapped it in double quotes. Those would go away if you paste it in IDE. But I don't have to. The point is by putting it in its own separate cell, I don't have to click on and highlight just the SQL. That's tedious. When you're executing a test case later. It's smart to write it up in such a way that you just click on the cell, control copy, and go paste it in your IDE. So that's another thing that you might do with uh, formatting or setting up your 
test cases in the cells. Next up, validation errors. In order for all the automated calculations, tables, charts, and reports to properly function, it's important that you fill in all three columns of any given row of a test case. And that means that the execution time, status, and test steps can't be blank. Maybe you're all filled out or they're all blank. Never partial. Um, and here's what happens. And the reason is that your calculations won't work. You'll have counts that are off, etc. So here's what happens when you don't fill it out properly. Let's just start here. Let's put in an execution time, five minutes. And as soon as I move off, bam, I get a validation error. And what's going on if I hit control down and jump to the end, what's going on is I have a count of how many cells are blank? Well, 300, 300, 300, and 299. They don't match. And so based on the little checksum there, these validation errors trigger and fire. And there's two different ones that'll fire. So in this case, it's saying there's 299 execution times and that does not match the 300 test steps. Oh, okay, let's go fill in the test step then. Blah, 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 move off. Well, rejection. Error code one went away, but now we have a rejection error code two. The status is has 300, 300 of these that are blank, but there's 299 test steps. So it's basically saying, hey, I'm short one on a status. So I'll go in here and flip it to a to-do and voila, all the validation errors go away. So always pay attention to this. You want it to be blank and white. And if it's not, then you're gonna have to go in here and find which rows are off. Um, and finally, deleting test cases. If you ever need to delete test cases, there is a better way and there's a more complex less preferred way. And there's some notes. Uh, let's get the note out of the way. And that is don't don't ever highlight and delete these. That's bad. Control Z to undo. There's formulas in there and the formulas are going to look and know what row number they are and just automatically calculate. Sure, it's not one, two, three, four, that's fine. It's just a way to know where the test case is. So just leave the gray cells alone, don't ever delete those. Now, for the better way to delete, what you're gonna wanna do is simply highlight the areas and press the delete key. Bam, everything's cleaned up. There's formatting in here and drop downs that has nothing to do with the contents of the cell. And then there's these values. So highlighting and hitting delete, that's the best way. You haven't messed around with row counts. You haven't messed around with any formulas. Everything is good. That's the preferred way to delete stuff. However, if you really want to, and there may be times you need to, because it's just simpler to edit the page, there's a more complex way, not as preferred. But what you would do is highlight, let's just try one. Highlight the one row you want and right click and delete. Poof, the row is gone. Now, if I drop down here, control to the bottom, now I have 297 rows where I used to have 300. Why is that? Oh, this must mess with the counts. Anyway, C19 to 317. There's 317. Where's C19? Eh, it's got the right. It's it just, that's how many there are. I see, I understand why. There's two plus 297 blanks equals 299 rows where we used to have three. That's what's going on. If I were to highlight and do the preferred way of deleting, we'd be at 299. And undo. So if you really need to, you can highlight and delete. Everything will still foot and tick. The report should all calculate. It just gets trickier. Deleting's easy. Inserting's a lot trickier. You can't just right click and insert a bunch of rows. You have to put the formulas back in and make sure you insert in the right place, etc. Not going to go over that now, but just be advised if you delete rows, it's a bit trickier to reinsert them. It's also doable, but I'm not going to cover it here. So preferred method, highlight those rows from these three columns, press the delete key. If you can't do that, fine. You can more or less do a one way highlight, right click, delete. I suppose, what the heck, here, let me show you how to control C, highlight a row, the entire row, control C, highlight the places you're gonna paste it to, I'll paste it down here, 
and be absolutely certain that you do insert copied cells. Otherwise, you'll overwrite what's there. So now I have taken this guy with the formula and the formula is still there. So that's how I insert paste it. Now I'm up to 312 rows. So if you really want to, you can delete and copy paste insert rows up and down. But again, the easiest way, just highlight the range and hit delete. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.